Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Lee and I am a digital literacy specialist at Markham Public Library. This video we're going to introduce to you our curbside 3D printing service and this video is going to show you step by step on how you can use this service. First of all, we are going to show you where you can find a good 3D model and file, what website we recommend. Second step, we're going to use Tinkercad to show you how you can customize and personalize your file. Tinkercad is a web-based free software that you can use. The third step, we're going to take that file after you finish modifying on Tinkercad and we're going to show you how you can put it on the 3D20 Dremel slicer software. That software is going to allow you to customize how you want the 3D printer to print your object. Since this is a virtual service, you will have to pay for the 3D printing online. The same way how you would pay any library fees with us, it will all be listed step by step on this video how you can do all of this. As you can see in this video, it is split into five different parts along the timeline. You can skip to the different segment that you need and skip to the ones that you want to repeat. Thank you so much for listening and let's get started. Before you fill in our online form on our website, you need to find a good 3D object to print, specifically a .sdl file. Among many websites that offer free 3D designs, we recommend Thingiverse. When you're on Thingiverse, go to www.thingiverse.com. On your search engine, type in Thingiverse, T-H-I-N-G-I-V-E-R-S-E. And when you're on the website, you see a search bar on the top or the middle of the page. Type a keyword into the search bar and see what you get. It will show you all the 3D designs that are related to your keyword. One little tip I always use is to look at the amount of likes and posts of make the design has. It really shows you how many people have also used and interacted with that design. Obviously, it is not the only way to see which file is better than the others, but it definitely filters out some potential faulty designs. Now, let's search for a design. Let's look for a laptop stand, since that might be something useful for many of us since we are always at home. As you can see, there are many designs as you scroll your way through the page. With the tips I mentioned before, I'm going to select this one. It has over 6,000 likes and it has 33 posts a make. When you look through a 3D files design, pay attention to how many files a single design has. This file has two and I can see that it is because there are two stands to hold up the laptop. Usually when you're looking through a design at the bottom of the images, it will show you how many files or pieces this 3D model has. The more file means the more complicated a design will be. And keep in mind, you will have to put all the pieces together after they are printed. Another good practice is to look at the designer's note at the bottom. If you scroll down, usually creator will list out the settings that they have used on their 3D printers to print out this exact model. You want to see what they did to get the best result. Once you have decided on which model you want to print, let's download the file. At the right side of the page, you see a giant rectangle. Download this file, click on that. Once it is downloaded, extract the zip file and we only need the .sdl here. At this point, if you want to customize this model by engraving your name or adding some symbols and characters to it, then you have to keep watching. We will show you how you can customize and modify your design on Tinkercad. If you don't want to do any customization to this design and just want to go straight to printing it, then you can skip and go to step number three and the video will show you how you can slice your object on our 3D20 Dremel slicer. Step two, once you have your design, now let's go into Tinkercad and modify your design. If you don't have a Tinkercad account, you can make one for free. It will just require you for an email address. Go to your search engine, type in Tinkercad, T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D. Once you are logged in, click on Create New Design. Now we are in the work plane. As you can see, 
there are shapes and objects that you can drag and drop into the work plane on the right side of the toolbar. You can even design your model from scratch too. If you have a model in mind and you know the measurement, you can definitely use the shapes that Tinkercad offer and customize your own design. We also have some blogs on this website that guides you through step-by-step -step on learning Tinkercad, so do check it out after this video. At the top right of the web page, click on the import button and locate your .sdl file on your computer. Now that the file is on the work plane, if you are using a mouse, right click on your mouse and hold it down and move your mouse around. You will be able to move your work plane smoothly left and right up and down. Give that a try. You can also zoom in and out by using the scroll function on your mouse or the plus and minus button on the left side of the screen to zoom in and out. Zooming in and out is useful, especially if you want to attend to greater details. Now, let's take a look at how big this model is. We need to keep in mind, our Dromo 3D20 printer has a maximum print volume of 230 millimeter wide and 150 millimeter in length and 140 millimeter in height. That means your print job cannot exceed this size and each print should not exceed a maximum of four to five hours. If your file has a longer print time, do speak to our staff to see what we can do for you. Let's take a look at how big this model is by clicking on the model once, then click on the stretch points. Now we see measurements of exactly how big this object is. If we want to reduce the size of the model, click and hold onto the stretch points and move in or out. Additional customization you can do is engraving your name or adding a symbols in or modifying the shape. Here, I am going to add in a simple text onto my laptop stand. To add a text, I want to go to the right side of the toolbar and click on characters and go into the text option. Click and drag the option and put it onto the work plane. Then simply type in the words that you want in the text box. You will see the word that you want transform onto the work plane. Now all you have to do is click and hold the word and drag into where you want the word to be on your design. Once you're happy with your modification, click export at the top right. Step three. Now that we are done modifying our model, it is time to put our model into Dremel 3D20 Slicer software. And to download the Slicer, go to Dremel's website, which is digilab.dremel.com. It spells D-I-G-I-L-A-B dot D-R-E-M-E-L dot com. Once you get to the website, then go to the software tab at the top and select 3D. You want to download the first option, which is the Dremel Digilab 3D Slicer and select the right option for your computer. After downloading, open the software and you should see a empty work plane in the middle. It should look very similar to Tangercad. The way that it moves, use your mouse, right click on the mouse and hold and move. You should be able to move your work plane very similar how you would navigate on Tangercad. Now on the left side, at the top of the toolbar, click on the folder icon to open up your .sdl onto this work plane, or you can click and drag the file and drop it onto this work plane. Once your object appears, if the color of your object is white and gray with stripes, that means your object is too big to print. In fact, it is bigger than the print plate itself. Use the scale function on the left sidebar to scale it down. You can also scale it by percentages to reduce the object altogether. To do so, just go to the scale function on the side and make sure you have the uniform scaling function checked off so that your whole object can scale up and down in one piece. If you are printing two objects at once, you can move the objects on the work plane to fit them all together. To do so, there is a move function on the left side. Click on it and move the object by clicking on the mouse with your left button and hold and move around on the work plane. Just keep in mind the moment you move the object out of the work plane, it will appear to be white and gray with stripes again.
The rest of the function on the left sidebar are rotate, and you can definitely rotate your object on a different angle. If you don't want to print with support or any additional material to make sure the flat side of the object always face down, even if that means your object will be printing backwards, that is okay. You do not want to print things on an angle because the chance of having a fail print is extremely high. On an angle, we usually mean anything with an angle of 45 degrees and more of overhang, you want to have a support underneath that to make sure the 3D printer is not printing in the middle of the air. The last function we have is the mirror function, which allows you to flip horizontally or vertically. Now let's look at the right side of the toolbar where all the customization happens to tell the 3D printer how to print your object. Remember in step one, I mentioned it is very important to look at the creator's note when we download their model online so that we know how they print their model exactly to be the best optimal result. Oftentimes the creator will note which settings is best to do for your design and this is usually where we translate that information onto this customization. However, sometimes we just don't want to spend too much money or time or materials on printing the object. So you can totally change up the print setting to fit your need. Now let's take a look at the first thing. Under material, make sure it is under PLA because Markham Public Library only offers PLA plastic. They are indeed biodegradable, but they are not food safe because the plastic is exposed to its machinery and metals inside the 3D printer. Under profile, this is where you can choose the overall quality of your print. Higher the quality, the thinner each layer of plastic it is when it is being printed and layered on top of each other, making the overall print on the outside very smooth. The lower the quality, the thicker each layer is, making the outer wall really rough. If you run your finger, you can definitely feel it. You can also see the millimeter diameter of each layer for each quality. We usually recommend customer to go with medium quality. If you are not giving this as a gift, it saves time and it also saves money. Then under print setup, if you are experienced with more advanced setup, feel free to set it up to custom and make your own customization. But if you are just starting out, we do recommend you to switch to recommended. It will be an easier experience for you. Now, let's take a look under recommended. Under infill, select how much plastic you want inside your print. When we are 3D printing, we need to think of the object in two category, the outer walls and the fillers inside your object. Infills means the fillers inside the print. 0% means that there are absolutely no fillers and no plastic inside your print, making your print very fragile and weak. But this is great if you're printing something that doesn't need to hold any weight, like decoration on a shelf. The next thing is 20% and 50%. These two are great for anything that might hold some weight, like laptop stand that I have here on the work plane. 20% to 50% is also an option if you want your object to have some weight to it to make it more luxurious. Finally, we have 100%, which is just solid plastic. This is a good option if you are printing parts to repair any machineries. But we do want to keep in mind that if you are printing anything to fix any machinery, this 3D printer only uses plastics to print out parts. So do keep that in mind whether or not it is suitable for repair and your machines. Finally, we have the gradual option, which is basically gradually increasing the amount of infills from the bottom of the print to the top. At the end of the day, just make sure to think about your infills in terms of functionality of your object and what it is for. Once you have picked your infill, the second option is support. For my design, I do not need any support because I do not have any overhang. Generally speaking, anything with a 45 degrees of an overhang should have support. One big tip to prevent the use of support is to try to think outside the box of how your print get printed, such as rotating your object or let it sit backwards to prevent the need to use any support. If you're not sure if your object needs support, please contact us using the form below or email us to discuss.
The last option is built plate adhesion. Basically, this is to print a brim or a raft at the bottom of your job or around your object. This is useful when you are printing something that you do not want the bottom edges to warp. However, PLA plastic usually do not run into this problem because it does not get affected by the temperature inside the 3D printer. Plastics like ABS are very sensitive to the temperature inside the printer, which is why ABS printers have a heating chamber inside the printer itself to keep the space warm and toasty while it is printing to prevent any plastic from warping or lifting. If you're not sure if your object needs a rim or a raft, please contact us again and we can talk about it over online or phone or email. After all the settings are set, click prepare at the bottom. It will give you an estimated printing time on the bottom of the work plane. This information is so important because each print we print for you should not exceed four to five hours. However, like I said before, if your print job does exceed that time frame, please contact us and we can discuss some alternative. Once you are satisfied with that time, click save to file and it will save the G code to your computer. The other thing I would want you to keep in mind is the pricing. We charge $3 an hour plus tax with all the print job. If your print file takes estimated time of two hours to print, then it will be $6 plus tax. Do keep that in mind when you are looking at the estimated time. Once the G code is downloaded and when you are filling in the form to have your print job printed, just upload the G code onto the form or you can just upload the .stl file if you are very unfamiliar and you want a staff to walk you through the steps. Step four, now that we have all the .stl and the G code ready to go, it is time to fill out that form on our website. Please fill in your full name, your email and phone number, and your Markham Public Library card. Next, please upload your G code that you just designed it from the Dromo Slicer or the .scl file that you downloaded from the website or Tinkercad. If you are uploading a G code, you can skip the customization below the length, the width, the height, infill, and quality questions because you have already scaled and programmed your setting of your object on the Slicer software already. If you are uploading a .scl file straight from a website like Thinkiverse, then please do fill in the desired dimension, infill, and quality below so staff will know exactly what you're looking for. If you don't know what each of these customization means, please watch the previous part of this video, the third segment. If you have any questions or things we should be aware of for your project, do let us know at the notes section of the forum. Last but not least, the final step is how to pay your 3D print. It is the same process as how you would pay for your library card fees. First, go to our website www.markhampubliclibrary.ca, then log into your account and access the My Account option. Then click on the Pay Fees. Enter your Markham Public Library card number and your PIN. And a quick tip is your PIN is usually the same number you use for the NPL catalog. Then click the checkbox on the right hand side of each find items or fees, then click submit. After reviewing your payment, you can pay with your credit cards. Once the payment is completed, you may choose to print your receipt by pressing the print button, or you can completely omit and just exit the system by clicking the exit button to return to the login page. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial on how to use our 3D printing curbside service. We're very excited to make your project a reality and to learn together.